Swingovers. And into a spiral dive. Get out of it and catch the dive. Hi, I'm Andre, and it's about time I gave you an update on where we are with the paragliding game. I'm really excited where we got to, but it took us over two months to get to where we are. But to show you the progress that we made, let's have a look at what we had before. So even though it looks like we have a paraglider and a pilot, uh, the game object is, is really just one rigid body. So if we have 3D space, it's simply something like a cube. It has a certain mass. Because it has mass, it has a certain force acted on, acting on it because of gravity. And it has a certain lift. And the lift, we choose to apply it further up than the center of gravity so that it would be like a pendulum. It would have some inherent stability. And when you want to turn, we just apply a torque to it and the object turns. This is fine for the simplistic simulation that we had, but once you want the paraglider to respond in a more realistic way to turning and the pendulum effect, you have to start adding things to it and you have to start adding different equations to what you want it to do. For instance, if you're flying, if you're flying out straight, it's quite easy to balance these forces in a way that you get the forward speed you want and the descent rate that you want, say, 40 kilometers an hour and minus one meter per second. But then when you start turning and you have some bank angle, what's gonna to happen to your simulation? Is it gonna be the same? Is it gonna be different? Uh, and same thing if, you, if you're looking from the side. So is that gonna produce more or less lift or what's gonna happen? So at this point, we had two routes to go. We could have, we could go the animation or puppeteering route where we write things in the game that says if this happens then do something and that's kind of like the animation route or the other way is to actually work on the physics so we give this a set of equations and then let the game actually simulate it for us in real time. It might be right, it might be wrong, but we're not puppeteering the paraglider into doing what looks right. We're just giving them a set of rules to go by of how the world in the game works um, and then letting the game do the calculations itself. And that's, and that's the route that we went for because we thought it's harder, but in the long run, it will give us more flexibility to do different things. So we thought, okay, we're going to go the physics way. So how would, what things would we like from this? And one thing I was, I thought it was uh, very ambitious, but I was really keen on is having a real simulator feel to it, where it really does something that is very similar to reality. So the first thing we did was to separate the pilot from the paraglider. So this is where most of the weight is, and this is where most of the lift is. And then we can have some kind of connection between the two. Then we thought, okay, well, what about if we had the pilot and then we had two nodes where there's connections between all of them, but then instead of having all that lift, we have half of the lift here, half of the lift here. What's that going to do in terms of geometry? And you guess, and you can see where this is going now. Where then we thought, well, what if? So we have the pilot, we started by testing just a small two element with spring and damper, then more elements, and then more elements to the point where we had something that kind of worked that had a pilot down there and something that resembled a bit more of a kind of like skydiving rig where I think we had eight or ten of them is basically more like this just to try to see what would happen uh, if we had a wing that was wider and we started getting some really interesting results so then we thought what would be really cool would have to would be to have something like a model of a paraglider and slice it into many different slices with many, many different elements, connect them all to the pilot and connect them between each other and see what happens. 
And that's basically finite element analysis. A lot of stuff in engineering works this way. If you want to calculate stresses in a component, you break that component down in many, many little pieces and you give little equations to each one of the pieces. Or, you know, you probably heard of CFD, computational fluid dynamics, that is used in research and development for uh, aircraft and all sorts of things where you break up an area in lots of different points and you calculate the values for each one of those points, giving you an overall simulation of how the air would flow across an airfoil or something like that. Actually, I can show you this. So the way this application uh, figures out how air would flow over an obstruction like that is basically by creating a big grid and dividing this all, all into little points and then calculating uh, the conditions for each one of those points. If you have any difficulty visualizing lee side and things like that uh, and you want to play with this app, uh, it's actually, I really recommend it. I'll leave, a, I'll leave a link in the description. This is uh, really good fun. So then the next step would be to get a 3D model of a wing and fill it with elements on the surface and each element or node would be like these things before. So I tried the best I could and couldn't find any suitable models. So I decided to make my own 3D model of the BGD base. Uh, I went for the base because this is the wing I fly and I know everything about it. I know my weight, the weight of the wing, line lengths, etc. And on the, and on the base, there's these really helpful pictures of the top view of the glider and the front view. And putting these into SOLIDWORKS, I can get a close enough model to that. And then by having a model that resembles this and is roughly the right shape, I can go on the line chart that is also readily available from, from BGD and where you can see all of the attachment points and the name of each one of the every single line in the paraglider. However, this would be having a point for every attachment point would be way too much because uh, that would generate many, many nodes. So what we did was to try to average them out. So all of these four together would be A1, all of these together would be A2, etc. And we kind of have uh, I think in total 26 uh, in the whole wing and the reason why these are offset is that to make it structurally sound in the game we can't have squares or four-sided polygons uh, we need them all to be triangles so then we have the model uh, and the exact points then we can import that straight into the game which makes putting new wings in different wings into the game a lot easier in the future and to visualize a bit better what's happening on that, I've created this 3D model, which is accurate to what's happening in the game. Each one of these would be a node. So that's A1, A2, A3, B0, B1, B2, and there's connections between them. And in the game, each one of these connections between two nodes has a stiffness and a damping. So this is how that model is working on the game at the moment. Uh, every node has its own lift as well as a connection to its neighbors and connections to the pilot. The way you turn is by shortening the distance between the K nodes, which are the ones on the trailing edge, and the pilot, which is how you do it in real life when you pull the brake lines. Because there's so many parameters on the game, we decided to put them on the side, both for the pilot and the paraglider, so it's easy to test and there's much testing to do. And we've also put my defaults, Ricardo defaults, and you can create your own just by changing those values and clicking apply changes. Uh, I like my settings a little bit loose so that the, there's a lot more give in the paraglider and pulling more on the brakes. And Ricardo's settings would be a bit better for like trying thermaling and stuff. But there aren't any thermals in the game yet. So you can change your own values and try things for yourself. For instance, the uh, internode stiffness and damping is the strength between each one of the paraglider nodes. Click apply changes and now you can see that when I pull the brakes, there's a lot more deformation on the wing there. And if I change the brake pull factor and pull even more, now I can do proper horseshoe stalls and get into a really big mess. And it looks like it's... Uh, there's a knot tied in there. It's just a, 
it's just a sandbox. Uh, it's interesting to explore these things and try different settings and see what the result is. So that's where we got to so far and we know that there are many many things wrong with it but we like the direction this is going. It's uh, really exciting and the good news is that we finally put a version out that you can play right now. <laughs> It's, uh, it's online, it's browser based, you don't have to install anything. You will probably need a computer and a mouse to play it. We haven't tested it in, on mobile phones or anything. Um, but it, it's a really easy way for us to share new versions and updates. Um, and at least you guys can try it out. And if you play with the settings in the game and do some testing, maybe you guys can even find some values that are better than the ones that we can do. Because we haven't done that much testing on it anyway. Let us know what you think. We've been holding on for this one for quite a while, but it took a, a really long time to develop. But we're really interested to know what you guys think. Try to keep the comments constructive if you can, because we know there's a lot of things wrong with it, but we just wanna try to make it better in the future. And as always, I wanna say a really, really big thank you to all these awesome people on Patreon that really support these long-term projects that are not trivial in any way. So yeah, having their support really helps put in the time to make uh, projects like this happen. So if you like the principles behind the game and other projects like this, check Patreon out. And if not, that's absolutely cool. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you very soon. Bye.